Hi friends, in the previous lecture we discussed the Q data structure and demonstrated its implementation by using linear and circular arrays and saw the advantage of circular arrays over the linear arrays. Today we shall be looking at some more implementation issues and the various applications of queues in computer science. First of all, today we shall be writing a program which makes use of various functions for implementation of queues using a circular array and the complete working of the program is shown with an example. For the sake of simplicity in our program, max q is taken as 4. The complete program is the state of q after execution of every statement is shown in the following slides. As we see after the call to init function, the values of rear, front and count are set to minus 1, 0 and 0 respectively and the queue is empty at that point. When the function nq is called, the variable rear is incremented to 0 and element a is stored at index 0 of items array and count is set to 1. The next two calls to nq increment rear and count by 2 and store b and c at indices 1 and 2 respectively. When the dq function is called, the value at index pointed by the front variable that is 0 is returned and front is incremented to 1 and count becomes 2. Next call to dq function returns value b stored at index 1 and sets front to 2 and count is decremented by 1. One should note that elements A and B are still present in the items arrays as we are not explicitly deleting an element from the array during the dq operation, even though the elements have been removed from the queue. In the array implementation of queues, the values of front and rear are being manipulated instead of physical removal of values from the array. After the next NQ operation, element D is added to the queue and rear becomes 3 and count becomes 2. After the next DQ operation, the value C is returned and front is set to 3 while count becomes 1. After the next NQ operation, element E is added to the queue and rear is incremented and it becomes 4. But since rear has exceeded the highest index, so it is set to 0. The call to dq function returns value d stored at index 3 and sets front to 0 and count becomes 1. Next call to dq function returns value e stored at index 0 and sets front to 1 and count becomes 0. As count is 0, so the queue is now empty. We now look at the various applications of queues in computer science. Queues are used for any situation where one may want to efficiently maintain a first in first out order on some entities. These situations arise literally in every type of software development. As an example, imagine you have a website which serves files to thousands of users. You cannot service all the requests, you can handle only say 50 users at a time. A fair policy would be first come first serve, serve first 50 at a time in order of arrival. A queue would definitely be the most appropriate data structure. Let us now have a look at applications of queues in operating systems. Queues are used in operating systems for controlling access to shared system resources such as printers, files, communication lines, disks, where multiple 
objects wish to use a single resource, but only one object can use the resource at a time. We now take three such applications of queues. First is printer queue. The operating system uses a printer queue to hold the identities of the processes where a process is a program in execution that wish to use the printer. Once a process starts using the printer, it is allowed to continue until it is completely finished. The other processes that wish to use the printer must wait and their IDs and the address of the file to print are kept in the queue. When the process using the printer finishes, the process kept waiting longest in the queue is retrieved and its print job is started. This ensures that only one person at a time has access to the printer and this access is given on first come first served basis. The second applications of queues in operating system are disk queues. In multiprogramming systems, many processes may be generating requests for reading and writing disk records, but a disk can perform at most one read or write at any one instance. So the operating system uses a queue to hold the request of each process to read or write from a sector on the disk. The disk's controller repeatedly retrieves from the queue the next request in line and performs it. When there are no more requests, the controller sleeps. Another example of queues in operating systems is the process ready queue. As we know, the CPU itself is managed by the operating system with the aid of a process queue where a process is a program in execution. The process ready queue contains the IDs of all processes that are ready to execute. The operating system retrieves a ready process ID from the process queue, loads that process instruction number and data information into the CPU's registers and starts the CPU to execute the process instructions for some designated time slice. At the end of the time slice, the ID of the executing process is inserted at the end of the process ready queue. The information in the registers for the process is saved and the ID of another ready process is retrieved from the process ready queue. In fact, without queues, an operating system cannot operate. Queues for simulations. Another classic programming application that uses queues is a simulation where a real life activity is modeled by objects. For instance, a new bank may want to know how many tellers to install. The goal is to service each customer within a reasonable wait time, but not to have too many tellers for the number of customers. To find out a good number of tellers, they can run a computer simulation of typical customer transactions using queues to represent the waiting customers. Another real life example is simulation of the airplane traffic at an airport. We can use an object to model the airport's runway. This is the resource used by the airplanes to take off and land. And at most one airplane can use the resource at a time. The airplanes are objects. An airplane resides either in the air waiting to land or on the ground waiting to leave. The simulation places the airplanes waiting to land within a landing queue and the airplanes waiting to leave in a takeoff queue, producing a situation like in the following slide. Some other applications of queues are reading from the keyboard. A queue can retain characters in the order in which they are typed. Once the characters are in the queue, the system can process them as necessary. Second is implementing a buffer. Computer systems must often provide a holding area for messages between two processes, two programs or even two systems. This holding area is usually called a buffer and is often implemented as a queue. 
Another example is level order traversal of trees or breadth first search in a graph. Cues are used in implementation of level order traversal of trees or breadth first search in a graph for sorting the vertices found. Radix sort and finally we look at a sorting algorithm for integers which extensively uses cues. The algorithm radix sort functions by sorting the input numbers on each digit for each of the digits in the numbers. The algorithm maintains 10 queues, one for each digit from 0 to 9 and a main queue to store all the integers for sorting. The algorithm follows these steps. First is place all the integers in the main queue. Second, remove each value in the main queue and place it in a digit queue corresponding to the digit being considered starting with the least significant digit. Third, once all the values are placed in the appropriate digit queue, collect the values from Q0 to Q9 in ascending order and place them back in the main queue. Fourth, repeat steps 2 and 3 with the tens digit, the hundreds digit and so on. After the last digit is processed, the main queue contains the values in ascending order. For example, let us say we have a list that contains the following integers. First place all the 6 numbers in the main queue. Next consider the units digit for each number in the main queue and place it in its corresponding digit queue. After the first pass, the digit queues will look like this. Now start dequeuing the integers from the queues starting from queues for digit 0 and going up to the last queue corresponding to digit 9 and enqueue all of them in the main queue. Then dequeue the integers from the main queue and enqueue them in the corresponding digit queue based on the tens digit. Thus for example, the integer 56323 will be dequeued in the queue for digit 2 since the digit at tens place is 2. Now again dequeue all the integers and enqueue all of them in the main queue. Next dequeue the integers from the main queue and enqueue them in the corresponding digit queue based on the hundreds digit and then dequeue the integers from the queues and enqueue all of them in the main queue. Next dequeue the integers from the main queue and enqueue them in the corresponding digit queue based on the thousands digit and then dequeue the integers from the queues and enqueue all of them in the main queue. Next dequeue the integers from the main queue and enqueue them in the corresponding digit queue based on the 10,000 digit. In case an integer is smaller than 10,000, then it is enqueue in queue corresponding to 0 digit and then dequeue the integers from the queues and enqueue all of them in the main queue. At the end, we have the sorted values present in the main queue since the number of digits are 5 for all the integers. We conclude our today's talk by having a look at another animation which has been provided at the following URL.
This animation depicts the round robin scheduling algorithm for allocating CPU in turns to different processes using circular queues. With this, we come to the end of today's talk on queues. Today we had discussed in detail the various applications of queues. In the next lecture, we shall be introducing a special type of queue called the priority queue. Priority queue elements have an additional element priority that changes the principle of first in first out to first in with the highest priority first out. Thank you. Mm -hmm.